If you watch the documentary about Garth Brooks, his own wife, Trisha Yearwood, says that there is nobody better than my husband at connecting to other people. There's most likely one missing structure, one or more missing structures that you have in this formula I'm about to show you as it relates to speaking, coaching, and publishing. Number one, we have to actually find that which makes us unique. This is our special. This is our talent. And I think a talent is very specific. See, always, it's, it's kind of a, uh, a trick question, but I always ask people, what is Garth Brooks' real talent? Okay, so, so it's, when you look at it, it's singing, performing. If you watch the documentary about Garth Brooks, his own wife, Tricia Yearwood, says that there is nobody better than my husband at connecting to other people. She said, when, it, when you are with him, it is always about you. His real talent, because there's a lot of people who can sing. We coach kind of some rising country artists. I've coached some, and I love the little rising country artists. They're not making any money. Here's what they say. Oh, Luke Bryan, he can't sing at all. And I'm like, well, he made $40 million more million than you did last year. <laughs> so apparently he can shake his booty better than you, or there's something he can do that you ain't doing, okay? But they believe, because here's what they believe. They believe, hey, I can sing better than he does. See, see, see the, the false positive is that ain't, the only, that ain't the only part of the equation. Singing. Just like the speaker. The speaker who can speak but can't get a speaking engagement. The speaker that can speak but can't drive leads. The, 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 the speaker or the person that wants to do events but can't get anybody to the events. The person that wants to write the book but can't finish the book. There's more to this equation than just the speaking, right? I spent all morning this morning trying to get people across the finish line of people who are interested in my coaching programs. We call that the red zone, right? That's a part of running a speaking and coaching business. So I don't call every person we generate because we're generating about 3,000 leads every 90 days, but I call the serious people, and that is a part of running this business. Everybody with me? So, so I see people say, oh, I can speak, but, but there's more to the equation here. First, what is it that you are the best in the world at? we got to find that which makes you really unique. And that is based on your past, your experiences, your breakdowns. Okay, I was a disciple of Covey from 18 to 25. That's who I studied under the most. So you say, well, how does that make you different? Well, most sales trainers teach technique. I come at it from more of a whole person theory concept, body, mind, heart, and spirit. How do I tap into the deepest human potential of this person? You see that? So what that does is it gives me another dimension when I'm coaching people. So if I'm coaching Dave and he said, man, here, coach, I know you're coaching me on how to build speaking, but man, but, I, but I gotta, I'm going through a, a, a breakdown right now. I got a broken heart. I got a crushed spirit. See, I understand that that will demotivate him. Everybody see that? We had a woman that was going to sign up for this two weeks ago, saw me speak, been watching me two years, so I'm coming up to school speaking. That night went home, found out her significant other was cheating on her and had a complete breakdown. <clears throat> see, that's different. Her mindset's not in the mindset right now to speak and coach. It's trying to get her life together. Everybody see that? So, so because I studied under Covey, that, that gave me a different dimension. Because I was a real basketball coach, I had to take people from all walks of life, all socioeconomic backgrounds, rich kids, poor kids, one parent, no parents. I had to put them into a team. I had to try to figure out how to win. For 10 years, I was practicing. Those poor kids were my little guinea pigs. I try a concept, and if it worked with the kids, I'm like, that'll work. Because adults are just big kids. You follow me? So, so you got to look back into your past and say, what... First, we got to find what makes us really unique. Like, this is it for me. This is my song that I want to sing to the world. Okay? I'm not just going to get up there and talk. I'm going to get up there and I'm going to connect with people because I have something valuable to say. My wife is writing a book right now about her drug use. She, was, she used really hard drugs from 21 to 24. I didn't know her during that period of her life. I was a basketball coach. 
She was a country girl from West Tennessee. She came to Middle Tennessee. She dropped out of college. She started hanging around all the wrong people, and she started doing hard drugs for three years. No direction, no goals, no purpose, no nothing. And then one day, just stopped. She's a very spiritual person. Deep faith-based from her family. You follow me? So we're being coached right now, and the first thing our coach said to her is, you're going to write a book on that. And you know what she said? I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that. He said, how can it be valuable to other people who are trying to get off drugs if you don't tell your story? See, what makes it useful, useful, what makes that experience very useful is her helping other people through it. Everybody see that? She takes that mess, turns it into a message, then she helps people, right? Now, her, now that three years of her life was not just about her, now it's for other people. So every morning she gets up at 5.30 and she works on that book. And it's just random thoughts. Then we'll hire a great editor, put it, in, put it together, package it up, Right? And she doesn't want to speak on it. She doesn't want to speak like I do. We had an insurance company call us and say, we want to hire your wife to coach all the women. Uh, and I said, well, you know, well, how much are y'all going to pay? And they said, 50000 And I said, she'll take it. <laughs> so I went home that night, and I'm like, hey, sweetheart. I uh, signed you up for a coaching contract. And she's like, what? I'm not a coach like you. Like, I don't coach people. And I said, Put your heels on, girl. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> and we went to St. Louis once a month, and here was their idea of coaching. Here are five women who have the most problems. And they would put my wife in a room with the five women who had the biggest problems at the company. And they'd say, here you go. And my wife would just sit in there and listen to them, talk to them. And at the end of the day, she'd come back, she said, you know what? I'm so frustrated. They ain't done one thing I told them to do. And I'm like, welcome to my life, sweetheart. <laughs> Everybody with me? Here's the deal. But that was good. Everything's a game. So we got to first find what it is you're supposed to be talking about. Number two, we, this is where most people I coach break down. We have to codify your message. It means break it down. Sometimes I say codify. Fancy people say codify. Niche, niche. We are in Tennessee, so I can break it down. This basically means I got to take what's in your brain that has made you really special and unique in the world, and I got to figure out a way to get it into something other people can absorb. Does everybody understand? If Chad has a unique process, or BJ has a unique process that has made him successful, I, that doesn't help me at all until he takes it from his brain and puts it into something I can absorb. And absorb means consume.